Welcome. What we're going to talk about today is how you can make a photo slideshow using Windows Movie Maker. The first thing you have to do, obviously, is open Windows Movie Maker. Now, once you've got it open on your screen, the thing you want to do now is add pictures. Seeing as we're making a slideshow, even though it's used for making videos as well, um, or any combination of videos and pictures too. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the pictures option, um, find out where our pictures are, select them all, and click on import. This will bring the pictures into the center of our screen. And what we can do from there is we can click and drag the pictures down in any order that we like, down onto the storyboard. So we can pick one picture and drag it down into each of the boxes we can see there. Once we've done that, we'd like to add some audio as a backing track. So we click on audio, and we go through the same process. We navigate to wherever we've stored our soundtrack, select it, and then import. We can then do exactly the same as we did with the pictures by clicking on the audio soundtrack and dragging it down into the timeline. First of all, we need to change from storyboard view into timeline view, otherwise it'll prompt us to do this. We drag the audio down and we can see the start. We have a big cursor which will tell us where the start of the audio will be. So we can line this up with a specific picture if we so choose. Once we've put the audio in the time bar, we can click and drag and move the whole of the audio around so we can start it earlier or later. And this is indicated by the solid blue bar at the bottom. We can also click on the left hand side of the audio box and we can cut off some of the sound. So for example here at the beginning of the tune I've got some blank space so I'd click and slide that in just to remove that sound. Obviously we can do the same at the other end as well and if we right click when in the audio we've also got the options to fade in or fade out the music. If we now change back to the storyboard view from the timeline and what we've got here is we're adding effects. Uh, there's two places we can add effects from either the top with the drop down menu or on the left hand side with the effects option. Select the effect you want and just simply click and drag it over the picture. What will happen is in the left hand side the box with the star will become filled in. To add transitions we do exactly the same process either on the menu bar at the top or on the left hand side with the transitions option. Um, click on that, the transitions all appear in the center choose whichever one we want and simply drag it down into the space in between the two pictures. There's a small box there. We can choose the same transition repeatedly or we can choose different transitions between each picture. At any time we can play a preview. So if you, for example if you want to see what a transition looks like uh, when it's playing in full speed or if you want to see what an effect looks like on a picture you can have a look on the preview here. Another way of adding audio is actually to narrate the timeline, which is what I'm doing here. And you get to this by tools and narrate timeline. Or again, on the left hand side, under the import, under audio, there's an option to narrate the timeline there. When you are narrating audio, you can only add it into the timeline view. So if you're in storyboard, it'll change it to timeline view for you. When you're done, you've previewed and you're happy with what you've got. Obviously, you want to save it. Um, saving, this is called publishing, rather than just saving. If you save, you're saving the layout, including all the setup of the program, rather than recording it to be viewed on another device. Um, so, recording it to be viewed on another device is called publishing. And I would always choose publish to this computer, so that you've simply got more choice to select options later on. Browse to wherever you want to save it. Uh, generally speaking, create a new folder for it, called whatever the project is. Give it a name and click Next. You've now got the choice of what quality you want it saved in. If you want a good quality for a presentation, then save it in high quality, 3 megabit per second. Low quality for the web, for YouTube, save it in a Windows Media low bandwidth, uh, 117 kilobit per second. When you're done, click on Publish and then sit down and wait. It will take a few minutes, depending on how many pictures you've got. What Windows Movie Maker is doing is it's actually creating a movie from the pictures you had. If you do want to preview immediately afterwards, leave that box ticked and then click on Finish.
the box that'll come up is your default media player, and it'll be showing your movie. There is, of course, a really quick way of doing this. Windows like to automate things. There's an Auto Movie button at the top of Windows Movie Maker. If you've already selected your pictures, so you've already brought them into Windows Movie Maker, click on Auto Movie and it'll automatically add transitions for you. Simply click on Create Auto Movie. You can also put in a title as well and put in audio background music. So it does give you various options there, but it gives you so much less control over the transitions and the effects. And that's you done.